ahead. She is. She is. Okay. All right. So I will go ahead and call this uh, meeting to order and uh, let the record reflect that all members of the budget committee, council member, uh -huh, council member Lambden and myself are present and we will move on to item number one, um, which is approval of the minutes of the February 17th um, meeting. Uh, so um, I would entertain any um, comments, questions, or a motion. So moved. Councilmember Wahab, would you like to second the motion? I did actually have some comments. Let me pull it up. All right. Would you like to second the motion first? Or uh, I'll second the motion, but then, okay, go ahead and comment. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, so I know I brought up the cannabis thing, and I know that uh, the mayor and councilman Lemon were not necessarily supportive, but I do remember that we could have the potential to bring it back next year was kind of in the conversation. I just wanted to make sure, do we need to include that in the minutes, or is that just something we could just acknowledge? We can acknowledge it. We can add um, any item we want to our agenda, so it's not, not necessary okay. to be... So, so that is my only comment on this. Otherwise, I support the minutes if we can acknowledge that that particular piece of it. Thank you. Well, not in changing the minutes, but just acknowledging it perhaps in these minutes. I, I don't remember it being said myself, but um, but and of course, anything can always be brought back. <laughs> but um, do you want the minutes to, actually to, changed? To, to, to staff, do you guys remember that conversation? I just want to... I don't, I mean, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I don't I just, recall, no. not saying that it didn't happen. Um, we talked about a lot. I can certainly go back and watch the meeting and, and check. It's a very long meeting. I will tell you it happened. Um, and that's what, you know, um, I just want to acknowledge. So, so. I, I don't, you always, you know, have the opportunity to bring things up again, but okay. and I, I don't know that I really remember that being said. Um, or or agreed upon, although there was and Mayor, to be quite frank, um, you're the one who actually brought it up and, and suggested it, so I, <laughs> I can obviously support it. So, that. Yeah, but, so um, uh, but no that, worries, but... That's just a common thing with any anything that we could consider it things again, but... Okay. Um, so, so I would just like that acknowledged and we can move forward. <clears throat> that it could be revisited in the future, I think, is our standard procedure there i don't yeah. think there was agreement to very decidedly add it to no. a future agenda item not a specific one but obviously this is not off the table for future discussion is my point nothing's off the table for discussion. Yeah. so i just wanted to acknowledge that i didn't see it in the minute so um just highlighting that okay. well so what are we doing are we amending the minutes from february or are we just going to um note this in the minutes for march City Manager, what would you prefer? Um, I, I, the meeting is recorded. We can go back, and if there's ever a question about it coming back, we can always go back. And I don't know that it needs to be specifically documented in the minutes unless you feel strongly that you'd like it to be. The minutes will have to come back next month again if we... Um, okay. Um, I, I will say that if you guys review the meeting, you'll see that that was kind of the, the thing, and I'm obviously open to it because I love the idea. So just we can move on and support this and move on. All right, so all in favor of supporting the um, minutes, uh, of supporting the motion, um, aye. 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 All right, um, we'll move on to um, item number two, which is the um, oral report on the policy innovation workshop update. Thank you, and I'm gonna do a little brief PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna see if I can share my screen, see if I got this done. And I wanted to, um, recognize both Mary Thomas and Nick Mullins in particular. Nick um, ha has been a part of the policy innovation uh, team leads and has been, in, ad in addition to his finance analyst roles, um, has been helping take a lead role in, in some of the work around the policy innovation workshops. So helped put this uh, PowerPoint together. So let me see if I can, see if I can, if I can share my screen. Oh, oh. Chrissy, can you enable me sharing my screen, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. One second. Thank you. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay. 
Okay. Can we see it? Yes. 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 <clears throat> the blue one. Yep. Policy Innovation Workshop? Yep. Great. Okay. So just um, a little, here's a, a lovely picture of some of our, our participants. I think this was from one of the first meetings, um, just a reminder of kind of what the policy innovation workshop is. And um, we'll walk through the steps in the process a little bit, but we've got, oh gosh, I think close to 60 participants now, um, both from our boards and commissions and also city staff. You can see a lot of uh, familiar faces on here on this particular Zoom screen. And um, just a really great group of individuals, very uh, diverse, good cross section of both the community and the organization um, who are all providing their voices to uh, the workshops. And this was, yeah, so this was the, the very first one we held on February 18th. And so just where are we now? Um, the group has completed three workshop, workshop sessions. And, um, you know, this is a group that got thrown together you know, in a pretty quick fashion. And so, and, and are being asked to tackle some pretty sensitive and um, controversial topics uh, and very emotionally charged discussions. And so the first, first workshop was really about team building and how do we have conversations? How do we support each other in these conversations? How do we make sure that people feel safe in having the conversations? And really started to talk about how, how to work together with each other. And so, you know, that that was really sort of one of the focuses of the, the, first, the first workshop. And then as we talked about previously, the lean innovation process, which these workshops are based on, takes you know, uh, is really rooted in doing deep empathy listening and deep empathy conversations and really getting to, as I've talked about before, falling in love with the problem and not the solutions. And so from where, where it starts is really having a significant amount of conversations with stakeholders. So the, the teams focused on creating challenge statements. What are some of the key issues um, that are surrounding this particular topic? Um, and then from there, what they did was they broke up into the interest groups. So they selected which of these issue areas am I interested in? And we'll talk about what the issue areas are on the next slide. But which of these interest areas um, do I want to focus on? And and then in that next meeting, they really focused on, okay, let's create a challenge statement. What's the, what's the problem statement that we're trying to look at or explore with respect to this particular topic? And then from there, there's uh, the process then goes to uh, brainstorming around what do we know and what don't we know? What are some facts that we know about this problem? What are some of the, the key things that we are we know for certain? And what are some of the things that we're just not sure about? Like, where do we need to get more data? Where do we need to un have a deeper understanding of, of issues? And then there was a lot of brainstorming around who are the key stakeholders? Who do we need to talk to to learn more about this problem to help us um, really uh, help us figure out what those unknowns might be. And then what the team has been doing is preparing for and starting to conduct stakeholder interviews. And I, we were just on a little prep meeting before this, and one of our uh, management fellows, Daniel Mao, who some of you have met, is actually sitting in the rotunda, uh, and Mary is going to join him tomorrow for the next three days, and they're actually doing uh, stakeholder interviews with unhoused individuals in the downtown. So they've invited, um, uh, Bax is working to provide folks and say, hey, go into City Hall, sit down, have a conversation. What are some of the challenges that you face around mental health issues and homelessness? And so um, really sort of having those very deep conversations with people who are experiencing um, the, the issues that we're, we're trying to address. So here are the, the teams and who their, what their focus area is and what their key stakeholder is to start. Um, and with the, the beauty of the lean innovation process is it allows you to iterate over time so that as you start to dive deeper into it, you could say, oh, you know, this key stakeholder, actually, we need to pivot a little bit. We need to change who that is. Um, but this is where they, they are right now. 
So team A and B are focused on communication and relationship building, which we heard a lot of that during the initial empathy interviews that were done, the community conversations where people don't know each other and that creates a a lack of sense of safety in the community. And so team A is really focusing on community members of color who are under 30 years old. And then team B is focusing on community members, all community members who are under age 26. So really more of a focus on our youth community. Um, Team C is focused focusing on mental health crisis response, and they are uh, really starting to reach out to stakeholders who are our community members in mental health crisis or who have faced mental health crises in the past. Team D is focusing on homelessness, um, and this is community members who are experiencing homelessness and or who've had service calls uh, from the city. And then Team E is resource allocation, and the stakeholder there is communities of color in Hayward and how resource has ha- resources have been allocated um, towards communities of color in, in our community. So here's where we are in the process and kind of the next steps. I know there was some discussion at last night's council meeting about when do we get to action? When do we get solutions? What, what, when are those presentations coming? Here's, here's where we are. Uh, so right now, Uh, As I mentioned, they're doing the interview, empathy interviews. Those will happen through this week. They'll document their learnings. Uh, We'll have another workshop, I believe, is happening next week where um, they'll take those, uh, the learnings that they've documented and start to brainstorm and identify possible solutions based on what they've heard during those, those initial empathy interviews. So next week, we'll really start the brainstorming around solutions and ideas. And then from there, they'll say, okay, what are we assuming? What are we assuming either about this this potential solution, sort of identifying what our key assumptions are, and then trying to design and conduct experiments that test our key assumptions. You know, if we have, we've identified solution A, and we say, okay, we assume that if we spend $10,000, that will get us to solution A. So how do we create some experiments around testing those assumptions. Um, and that, that'll vary by whatever the, the particular assumption or um, a solution is. And then right now we are planning um, sort of final presentations from the group with their, their hopefully a consensus solution or idea that they'd like to bring forward on April 26th. Um, and that'll come to the Budget and Finance Committee. And we've, we've talked to, the team has talked a little bit about what happens if the group can't come to a consensus on a solution or a policy suggestion or recommendation? And so I think if the group is really struggling to come to a consensus around one particular specific idea is to create almost like a prioritized list of, of projects or policy things that should be identified. And then I think our team is really going to be challenged to take those prioritized lists, work with the council and say, which ones would you like us to pilot next year? Which ones, you know, and, and there may be different groups that work on different ideas or, or options. So that's where we are in the process. And then the, I think the plan is whatever comes from the budget and finance committee presentations and your recommendations, then on our Saturday budget work session, we would spend um, a good chunk of time Uh, sort of maybe towards the end of the day or maybe at the beginning we'll figure out what the schedule looks like really kind of walking through the next steps um, funding that might be needed for the pilot programs and incorporating that working to incorporate that into the budget Uh, just a reminder here is the website where folks can go and um, get more information uh, hayward-ca.gov backslash hayward safe Uh, it also has all of the meeting recordings from the workshops and uh, agendas and pre- any slide decks or PowerPoints. And the, the workshop session one, I think is if you wanted to go get a more deep, a deeper dive into the lean innovation process, the slide deck from that and the, the presentation that was done towards the beginning of that meeting was really helpful. Um, our consultant, uh, Heather Hiscox, who we've worked with for a long time, um, did a really uh, sort of an overview of the lean innovation process if anyone is, wants to learn more about that. So that's where we are. And I don't know, Nick or Mary, if you wanted to add any additional comments. I know Brian Matthews is also here. Um, He's also a key key member of of the team. And I'm trying to think who else is. I think those are the key key folks who are here that have been participating. And Daniel's Daniel's attending along with, uh, I think, 1909 representatives who are also part of the workshop series. All right. Any questions, comments about the report? Uh, Aisha, go ahead. Councilmember Wahab. We don't have a lot of attendees, so. <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> um, if you could go back to your slides, sorry.
so uh, number one, and, and you don't have to necessarily click it just yet um, because I, I kind of can see clearly um, for the age groups, uh, there was a under 30 community mm -hmm. members of color under the age of 30 and then community members 26 years old and under. I think and this it's way too much of a focus on young people. Um, hate to say it like that. Um, and I understand the difference between the two, which to be honest with you is not, um, one is members of color. The other one seems broader. It's still under 30. Um, 26 is also years old and under. Um, we have a commitment to all people, uh, not just young people. Um, so I do want to highlight that we should be reaching out to middle-aged people as well as seniors. Um, and, and who tends to call, you know, for public safety issues the most, right? Um, I think that's a big factor, at least for me, I would like to see, you know, um, how people respond if they're my dad's age or my age or, you know, something else, right? So I think it's not wide enough to be quite frank. And if we can expand that, that's point number one. <clears throat> Do you want, do you, I mean, do you want us to pause and respond or would you like to wait? Yeah, till... you could respond, I guess. Okay. And yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll let um, some of the team members talk about why those specific stakeholders were um, selected. But the what um, the lead innovation process asks you to do is basically narrow in to, to, to basically start with who you think is the key stakeholder. There are obviously a ton of stakeholders, but who are the people who are experiencing the challenges that we've been talking about in terms of interactions with the police department. And, you know, those are primarily young people and particularly communities of color under age 30. And so I think from a, how do you work on, you know, that was, that was identified as the, the sort of number one issues. Like how do we work on relationship building between the police department and our communities of color under age 30? And I think Nick has his hand raised, so maybe he can give some more insight into how those were, those were selected. Cause I know they were brainstorming and all of those different, you know, senior citizens, uh, you know, lots of different interest groups came up as topics. Yeah, it's actually perfect since I'm the team lead for uh, Team B. Um, we did have the elderly um, as one of the stakeholders. We had a wide variety. Um, however, whoever is or whatever group is chosen is chosen by consent. It's more of an organic process. While we would have liked to pick everyone if we had the time to do so. Um, you know, this is a much more condensed version of lean innovation. So we, you know, we're unable to reach all of the groups that or can conduct this research on, on the, all of the groups that we normally could have. Um, so that's where we're at right now. It's not necessarily to say that, you know, we can't pivot to any of these other groups in the future, but um, for this particular time frame, uh, this is what was chosen by by the teams. Okay. And, and I, I appreciate the response from both our city manager and yourself. <clears throat> now, my concern is this, um, the survey that we did for the community that kind of kicked this off um, months ago, that was also very youth skewed. Um, I will say that as, as we all know, statistically, um, policing tends to happen around uh, members of color as well as youth, right? We get that. However, I would like to understand more deeply from stakeholders that quote unquote live in fear, right? And um, I think that was the biggest, um, I think it's a disservice if we do not have a balanced conversation. So obviously those that are affected negatively by policing and then those that rely on policing. I think those are the two things that I'd like to see. So. I think you guys know that I'm, I'm pretty big on balanced conversations. So, so if we can include that as like a 10 to 15 people, maybe 20 people as a little bit elderly from 35 and up, <clears throat> um, it might be beneficial, right? Um, maybe 10 seniors, 10 middle-aged people, and then we can have like a little bit more of a deeper understanding. I personally think that's important because, you know, you're going to be talking to parents of young people in that are middle-aged and then you'll talk to seniors who you know obviously have different needs so so i, I just want to highlight that um and even on the picture panel uh, to be completely frank on number two um you know i did a quick glance and 
you know, obviously some people have their cameras off. Um, I don't see a lot of senior influence here either. And obviously we have staff and so forth. And, you know, um, I could assume people's ages, but I, I do just want to say that I think that there needs to be input across the board as well on age. So uh, as much as we talk about diversity of race and, and, and gender and so forth, but it's also age in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> as much as my mayor and I always joke about, you know, the, the age gaps, you know, we, we want representation on both ends, right? Um, so, so just highlighting that. Um, if you don't mind going on slide five. Okay. I think from the time we are today till presentations to council, it's a very short time. It's about a month and a half. Um, I am a little nervous about this. Um, I have been hearing feedback that, <clears throat> you know, uh, things aren't going um, in the direction of, let's say, a solid I'm going to use the word product. That's not necessarily what we will produce out of this, but if there's a product or not produced after this. Um, and if we are providing input um, and the fact that we aren't even including seniors just yet, um, I I'm a little concerned as to like, what are we truly doing and, and how we're going to do that. Um, so I, I do just want to highlight that for April 26th. Um, I know that, this council has kind of leaned in direction and obviously that's become more and more important as we have another officer involved shooting. So, um, you know, we're, we're, to be quite frank, we're, we're investing a lot in this and, and I hope that the outcome is productive and, and producing something. Um, what is the last slide? And I apologize. Uh, the, the fifth to last fifth. Sorry. Sorry. That was this one. Okay. Yeah, that's the same. Um, so, so I just want to highlight that, you know, I, I have been very, very uh, reluctant to chime in too much on this. I, I wanted the process to work out and, you know, you know, everybody to have their meetings. There has been three meetings. I know that the, the stakeholders um, or the focus groups have been split up. Um, I've, I've chimed in and, and heard feedback from people involved. <clears throat> so my only concern is I definitely want something tangible. Um, even if in year fiscal year 2022, uh, moving forward, it's a pilot project, but um, obviously I want some, some productivity out of this, right? And proactive stance on what we're looking to achieve. So, and you're right on homelessness, on mental health, uh, definitely my focus. And then hopefully the call center as well, uh, whatever is happening there. And then do you guys feel that the conversations and granted it's focused on their subcategory of like, whether it's homelessness or mental health, do you feel like the groups are working well together, being transparent and not dragging their feet? Um, well, the, the conversations I've overheard and, and sort of listened in on have been incredibly productive, but I'll let Nick or Brian or Mary weigh in as well. I'll jump in for me. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Nick. You go first. I was just going to say, I so far, yes, um, especially getting to this point with how fast the pace has been with the work. Um, I do think that it's been a pretty, all the groups have been pretty cohesive, albeit there's been some, some, some teams have had to do a bit more research behind the scenes to, to get to where we're at. But I think the groups have been fairly cohesive. With that being said, I think going forward, um, that's if we're being realistic where it could be more difficult because, you know, the solution building piece after we do the empathy interviews, that's where there's likely going to be differing opinions on um, what, what is the preferred solution or what is the best solution for the, for the stakeholders that from the information re we receive from interviews. Um, so I think that could be where, you know, there's, there's some issues, but as of now, I think the groups have been, functioning pretty well. Okay. And, and the reason why I'm concerned is because to your point of like the research in the background, oftentimes if we belong to a certain department, we tend to be siloed in, you know, our process and procedures, right? And since this is a collaborative effort across multiple different disciplines in the city um, uh, services, um, I definitely want to just make sure things are transparent. You know, it's not we've always done it this way. So I can't even think of a new way of doing something, right? Which we all are, are, are victims of, right? So I definitely just want transparency, uh, good faith effort that, you know, people are willing to, to see a new 
version of something, right? As we talk about the, you know, reimagining public safety. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, we're all one larger team, right? So we may have like, you know, our partner as our colleagues uh, that we work with every day, but then also the larger team of the whole city staff. Um, so I just want to highlight that. And then, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, I know that I've had meetings with um, all the different unions involved in, in some of this. And I know there's been questions about, um, you know, the legalities, the insurance, the this and that. I have asked the questions. It, it has been relayed to me that we will cross that bridge w when we get there and so forth. Um, so I do want to highlight that. And then um, even if we're talking about mental health and 5150s, right, um, to our city manager, um, I will be emailing you um, some documentation that's that's pretty, the language is pretty clear. Um, in regards to 5150s, uh, police officers are not the only people that can do 5150s. So I, I just want to highlight that. I know that was a question raised to me. Um, and uh, some decent models with some language behind it. And Captain Brian Matthews, I know he's on this too. So I'll definitely CC you and the chief of police as well. So um, that's, that's those helpful. are- <clears throat> We're capturing, I know a lot of council members have sent me ideas or articles from different agencies and we're sort of capturing those in um, a sort of research bank so that the groups have access to those and can can look at those different ideas and suggestions as they go through the process. Definitely, definitely. So I, I just want to be as transparent, but hopefully, you know, again, I'm, I'm in my opinion, I'm hands off, but at the same time, I, 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 I'm a little anxiety ridden at this point. Um, I would like some product. So thank you. Those are my comments and, and questions, if you will. Okay. Council member Lambden, did you want to? Um... Sure. I can share my screen again if you need me to. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, so um, I want to acknowledge that the staff who are working on this are really um, folks who have been leaders in cross-departmental collaboration, and I really appreciate that. And um, appreciate that the team that was built to do this was built to do this, <laughs> literally, that they're, um, these are our commissioners from all across the city, that, um, that these are folks, partly by design and partly by luck, are folks who have a track record of representing a lot of voices in our community. And so I really want to appreciate the process so far. I'm looking forward to the outcomes, certainly concrete um, outcomes are something that the whole council has asked for um, and that urgency to do something um, is there. That's, that's not a secret. Um, and the, the timeline to have the best solutions that the group can come up with. And I don't mean best in a judgmental way. I mean, pulling all that thinking together and coming up with what, you know, if it is um, a mix of some concrete things and some things that are recommended, but not, there wasn't consensus about, um, but that it really allows us, the council to then take that input and make those concrete decisions as part of the budget process. So um, I do want to respect the fact that we need to have those answers so that we can really start moving um, by July 1. Um, and I know that that's the design here. So I, I'm appreciating that. Um, I also, if I had, if we had the reactions button in our <laughs> meetings, I have to admit, I would have put up big hearts when you mentioned the interviews with folks experiencing homelessness, interviews with folks experiencing mental health issues, folks experiencing interactions with PD, because people have heard me say for years, you know, when, how do we get the voices of folks living, whatever it is we're talking about into the room? And there are factors, um, topics where we've done that really well historically and that we are getting better at that is so exciting and I just want to appreciate that um, how far we've come thank you for that um, other than that you know looking forward to the outcomes thanks all right. And I would say that I agree. I, I, I actually uh, do think that first of all I'm not going to second guess what you know we started this process. I appreciate the update. I don't want to interfere in what these groups are doing. You know, I think we started it and we need to give them a chance. But I am not at all surprised at the focus on the younger age group because I do think that 
a great deal of what we have, you know, heard and what we are trying to address in doing um, this, in, in doing this exercise um, is, is about how that, um, you know, younger group of younger people and, and in our, in our city, I think that, um, that, there are more um, there are more people of color. I, I don't really even like to talk about that. I truly I, I know I know we need to. I'm not trying to say that I don't see that there are things we need to talk about in that area. But um, but I think you I, I, I think the demographics would show that there are. Um, that those those are two groups, young people and people of color, are are sort of consist more consistent oh. than you know um, in the older age group, certainly in in my age group probably, and um, and uh, and I do think these are the these are many of the people that we have been hearing about hearing from in terms of the concerns about how we're doing policing now. And so I, I'm not surprised at the focus, and I'm not going to second guess it. I think we have started this process. Um, people are obviously taking it very seriously. And I'm really appreciative of that, of the people who are putting it in. I know that we set it up with, you know, and told people you are going to have to put a lot of time into this and, you know, during a short time frame to get somewhere. Um, I've seen good things come out of the lean innovation process in our city. So I'm hopeful that we will see this. And I, I don't, at this stage, um, you know, I'm thanks for the update and keep on the work. And I'm really looking forward to hearing to seeing what we have on April 26. And again, what comes out of this process that is not necessarily um, the sum total of things that we might address and, and, and changes that we might make in terms of how we do policing in the city. And um, and certainly our survey did reach out very much to, you know, all segments of the community. And we have heard from all segments in the community and including older people. And, um, and you know, I think there are differences in how general, generally, not, not across the board, you know, there are, <laughs> but, um, but in any event, I, I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't surprised to see that because I do think that's the area where there is a great deal of concern in terms of how, um, you know, we have been doing policing in the past. And so um, I, I am looking forward to seeing what comes out of the process. And I really thank you all for the, for the report. And with that, unless anybody else has any comments. Did you want to do public comments, Mayor? Just did we? Um, did we get through the whole your whole? Yeah, that was that was all we had in terms of the presentation. So I just wanted to make sure if you were planning to do public comments for the. Oh segment. no, actually, yeah, I, I should. I I skipped it. Do we have public comments at the beginning? So. Yeah, and I think it's because we had two attendees. But uh, let me uh, let me then. Okay, we will go back to we, we're through with this item. I, item number four. I mean, I, item number two. Um, and we approve the minutes. So I will ask, are there any members of the public present who want to make a public comment? I'm not seeing any hands go up. There are three people on that list now. Um, not seeing any one, so I'll close public comments. Okay, yeah, sorry. Thank you for calling my attention to that. I'm, you'd think by now I would know how to follow an agenda, but you know, <laughs> been a long day. Um, let's see. Um, so now we are on item number three, which is to review and comment on the annual review of city issue, issued debt. And I assume our finance director will take the lead on that one. That is accurate. <clears throat> so I have a- uh, Right, okay. Please, this evening, if I can figure out how to share my screen here. Um, give me one second. Here we go. All right. All right, there we go. All right, so thank you. I appreciate it. Um, tonight, we've got a few items. We'll start with the uh, annual review of city issued debt. Um, I, I won't uh, get too deep into the details of the uh, of the report. It's pretty nuanced. Um, I, I think that the overall um, message that I really highlight 
um, to the committee is um, our debt is down. Uh, the the reason that being is uh, the reason that is is that we have not taken on any new debt um, over the last year, which is fantastic. Obviously, we will try to continue uh, that trend as, for as long as possible um, to try to keep our our payments as low as possible. Um, the city had uh, a legal bonded debt limit of $3.3 billion. Um, clearly, we're nowhere near that. Uh, as you can see on this slide, um, we're at just less than $160 million. Um, and with 117 of that uh, approximately being in uh, in the uh, in governmental funds and uh, about 77,000 of that essentially funded mostly by, um, by the general fund. Um, and or Measure C. Um, the, the legal uh, bonded debt limit is not something the city's subject to, um, and it's pretty nuanced. It is a, um, a calculation of 15% of the city's assessed valuation um, that will be subject to the limit. And if, if we were um, not a general law city, uh, I'm sorry, if we were a general law city, we would be subject to that limit. But, but because we're not, we are not subject to that limit. Um, the best piece of news that I've got for um, for the committee is that in uh, in spite of the pandemic um, and where we're at financially, uh, the, the sort of troubles of last year um, and, and those caused by the pandemic, the city's uh, rating um, was uh, the city's credit rating was upheld at double A plus. Um, and we were issued a uh, positive uh, outlook, which was fantastic. Um, hard to believe that, uh, you know, as, as we um, worked our way through um, the, the first months of the pandemic last year, um, that we would be able to have such a, uh, a positive outcome with the credit rating. Um, I think that's a reflection of uh, the, the fact that um, really uh, all agencies were going through the same, same or similar things that we were um, and the, the impacts to um, to agencies' uh, finances were similar um, or or far worse than than what we went through. So uh, that's really kind of all I've got. I'm happy to entertain any questions you guys might have, and um, you know, I will uh, stop sharing, but can certainly bring it back up if necessary. You're on mute, Mayor. But couldn't you read my lips? I said, comments, anyone? <laughs> uh, Sarah. Sure, I'll kick this one off. Actually, I just had one um, question and one comment. The comment is thank you very much you. for the uh, excellent stewardship of our resources and um, the report. And then please just remind me, um, at the top of the chart of various debts, uh, General Fund 16 refunding, Refunding, please remind me what COP was. Uh, certificate of participation. Oh, right. Of course. Okay. Thank you. The fancy you. name for a lease, basically. Um, Aisha, did you have any comments on this one? Yeah. Um, give me one second. Let me take a look at. Um, can you guys provide any analysis on uh, the, the COVID funding that we're going to be getting? Can I provide any analysis? Or not analysis, but commentary? We're going to be coming to the council in a work session in the next couple of weeks. Um, right now, the current number that was in the, the legislation, the federal legislation, Hover is hovering around $38 million that'll be allocated in two tranches uh, to Hayward. Um, we'll get half of it in the next 60 to 90 days and the other half in 12 months. Um, but that could change, that amount could change as they finalize, you know, there's uh, federal, as the federal legislation gets sort of um, goes through the process that that allocation may change. It's, I've seen an, a figure anywhere from 35 to 38 million. And so, what our plan is, is to come to the council and uh, at a work session to just do an overview of what the money can be used for, what are some of the restrictions. Um, the council also needs to, uh, we're going to probably have the council adopt a resolution certifying that we need the funds. Um, there's, there's supposed to be a, an application process. It's very 
very loose that our, our federal lobbyist says it's a very loose application process. You basically have to adopt a resolution saying you need the money and we get the money. So, um, uh, so we're going to be putting that together and probably have the council just take action on that the first time we come to talk about it. So um, we're, you know, we're, we're, the key elements, you know, the, the funding is supposed to be used to help offset revenue losses for local government and to provide for um, community recovery and COVID related expenses. So those are some of the key, the key elements of it. Okay. And, and I appreciate that. I, I do want to highlight that. I think that, you know, there are smaller cities than us that are getting double that. Um, so uh, just highlighting that. And number two is, are we clear that the 38, let's say 35, 38, whatever the number is, is for the span of two years or is it for each year? Yeah, I, I, I think we're a little off topic here in this. This doesn't really have, um, I mean, yeah, I suppose it's money and you could relate it to long-term debt, but I'm just a little worried about we're getting... Okay. Off understood I, I do just want to highlight that um that these are good questions i'm not saying in and we should have them when and i think kelly's plan I, i'm a little surprised i mean maybe we could it's too or it was too early and now i mean you know the announcement came too late i think to ha get this on a on our agenda no worries, today. No worries. Um, so, so what is you know granted I, I see the report ahead of us but what is the total covid impact to the city as a whole um, that's also that not part of this budget item. It, I, okay. So we can move on to the next item and I'll ask yeah, the same question. It might, it might fit well, even under the next item. Um, but, but I, I don't want to stop you from, I just don't, I just want to stick to, this is a very kind of simple annual report about, um, city, about our debt and there's a debt limit, which we're never anywhere. I, this is always, I, lo I always love this um, topic when it comes up every year because- okay. So how about this question? That limit that was set up by the, you know- With our debt and the fact that it's discussing our, some of our, you know, liabilities and, and things like that. Let me, let me just ask the questions that I do have. Fiscal year 2021 on the graph of the debt summary. <clears throat> um, you know, I just wanted to understand the the, the raise in the, the, so if the maturity date of fiscal year 2021 on, um, if we take a look at the general fund on item number two, and then the internal service fund, the fleets, item number one, right? Um, I'm sorry, Aisha, where are you, where, where are you? Um, attachment to. Ah, okay, thanks. Okay. I just wanted to understand since it's at its maturity level, um, and, you know, technically, hopefully we, we don't have to take care of certain things. Like, I just want you to elaborate a little bit more on that then. Elaborate on, on what? I'm sorry. You, you kind of lost me there a little bit. Attachment number two. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm with you there. Okay. The general fund section. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the maturity dates that, um, you know, for example, fiscal year uh, 2002 was the issuance date. Maturity date is fiscal year 2021, which we're technically in. Um, can you talk about that particular item and also the fire vehicles um, that is an internal service fund with the same maturity date? And potentially as we move forward, um, you know, and we have to replenish everything, you know, anything you can kind of relate to. Um, so, you know, obviously the the uh, 2002 maturity has been, uh, will be fully paid. Uh, by the end of this uh, fiscal year. Um, and so that we will no longer have to uh, budget for that um, couple hundred thousand dollars um, on the annual uh, debt service. I think it's probably less than that. It's probably uh, in the neighborhood of 70 or $80,000. Um, the others, uh, those leases, um, you know, we'll continue to make our payments as, as scheduled. Um, Those are, you know, small drivers um, in, in in the city's overall debt. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I'm, I don't know what, what more, too much more I can say there. Not not uh, trying to hold anything back, but if you got specific questions on them, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. And, and I, I do just want to highlight, I did send you an email uh, with our city manager, uh, uh, you know, about two weeks ago now. Um, so I'm looking forward to receiving a response to that email. Um, but other than that, I have no further questions. 
Okay. Um, Sarah, you had anything else? Thank you. Yeah, I just realized um, the financing for the self-contained breathing apparatus, um, is that yet in here? Because I think that it's was a, a debt finance thing, right? It's not because we don't have the agreement. Um, ah. The final, you know, that sort of the signed uh, agreement um, back from letting us know what the payments will be. Um, and we will certainly get that in here. Um, however, I think there's a likelihood that we will pay it off um, ahead of time. Uh, and so uh, we, it may appear on here as a uh, momentarily, uh, but then we'll get it paid off and, and off of the, uh, the debt. Um, but it, it's a, even, even if we are to fully finance it, it's a, a, a I believe a three year, a three year um, agreement. Okay. Great, thank you. I like looking at the line on the RDA repayment agreement with the general fund um, and the $800,000 that we are continuing to get to. Um, and it looks like it will really go for another five, five to six years. Mm -hmm. correct? Yep. But that's a, that's good that we're getting that debt repaid to us. That's debt to us and correct yeah hard fought uh for repayment of but um but long and hard yes yeah. very much so. <laughs> yes um okay so if there's no other no one question it's an easy ahead. one the fitch rating does that happen every two years uh it does not have that periodic of a um i'm sorry that's not the periodic basis that it happens on it can happen excuse me, more frequently or less frequently, it's typically on a um, annual basis that they'll sort of um, relook at it. They may not issue a, um, a whole new rating. Um, in this case, they did because I think uh, there was pressure on the rating agencies to uh, reassess everyone uh, based on how they were faring through um through the pandemic, um, and and likely there were some um, some agencies that had to default uh, on their debt, or had their um, their rating changed quite a bit. Um, but generally, it's it's each year or um, as we issue uh, new debt. Okay, and and the only reason why I ask is because 2019 was not included, so I just was assuming it's a two year period, but it's it's obviously not. Correct. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Actually, along those lines, well, Moody's was the one who had, you know, we, you know, we do seem to get these sort of, hap you know, <laughs> not, um, I mean, yeah, last year it was Moody's who actually gave us a somewhat worse outlook. This year, Fitch is giving us um, uh, back what I think we had had before the double, um, double A. Um, and favorable outlook, but you know, so what, why the different agencies? Um, it, again, it kind of depends on, um, it depends on what debt issuance. Sometimes they'll, they will do uh, a specific, uh, a rating specific to a debt issuance, right? And so they'll look at, like, they'll just look at the COPs and they'll say, you know, for this, uh, for this issuance, the city has a rating of, or I'm sorry, the the, um, the agency has a rating of X, but specific to that uh, that issuance. In this case, they were rating us as an agency overall, um, and so they they looked at us. It it not um, so. Credit ratings are kind of a funny thing. You don't need it until you need it, um, and so there isn't a huge advantage um, to uh, getting them perpetually. Uh, because you have to pay for them. Um, and the only people that look at them are uh, people who are going to then um, turn around. At, I shouldn't say that. The only people that, that use them um, professionally are people who are going to turn around and issue bonds on our behalf, underwrite the bonds that we're issuing, those sorts of things. Um, and so it's not necessarily um, the best value for the city's dollar to have, you know, have different agents. Great on an on a ongoing basis, um, and so you know one is one is as good as the other. Um, they're both recognized. There there are others out there that aren't as widely used, um, but it's it's been typically uh, standard and poor's, Moody's, or Fitch that the city's used. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, 
There's no further comment on that. We will move on to um, item number uh, four, um, review and comment on the annual city benefit liabilities and funding plan. Sounds good. And I will once again, share my screen. I think, yeah, there we go. All right. Um, and so I, I won't get into the uh, the nuances of the of the report all that much, although we can certainly in in the conversation that uh, that you all had. I'll cut right to the chase here, um, looking at really the two of the uh, the city's largest um, unfunded liabilities uh, in both Calpers and OPEB. Um, Calpers, as as we all know, um, is the city's uh, retirement. Uh, system uh, uh, the the pensions uh, for for city employees. Um, we've got a an accrued liability of uh, 1.2 billion, um, and assets in the plan of uh, 766 million, give or take, um, and with an unfunded liability of 466.9 million, um, and a funded ratio of 61.9 percent. Uh, that's an improvement, I believe, a slight improvement over last year, um, which we were in the high 50s in a couple of these groups, um, and that's really kind of um, we, we've seen that a bit um, with with uh, CalPERS, uh, some of the changes that CalPERS has made trying to make up for uh, lost time, if you will, um, with them having sort of uh, known that these changes were coming, um, but slow, slowly rolling them in or being reactive instead of proactive. Um, the city makes its payments on time every time. In fact, in many cases, we pay um, our unfunded liability portion uh, at the beginning of the year um, to achieve some savings. Uh, last, last year, I think it was about three quarters of a million dollars. So we're not talking about um, small amounts, um, but uh, we'll, we will continue to do so. We also um, opened up a, uh, a, um, a retirement trust fund um, that will that we can uh, it, it's known as a side fund uh, that we can put money into um, and then use that as well to fund these um, and or accumulate other funds that we uh, don't don't necessarily want to put in the plan or or pay more than we have to at a certain point. Um, our our OPEB uh, other post employment re, uh, benefits uh, to our retirees and in our city it's it's essentially retiree medical um, and so we've got. Um, We've got uh, an accrued liability of approximately uh, 77.75 million uh, and assets um, of about 8.29 million. This was as of uh, a point in time, we've got more than that as of today, um, but uh, we've got uh, a, an overall unfunded liability of approximately 69,000, or I'm sorry, 69 million, I wish 69,000. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Which, which, you know, is, is, again, not a small amount, but certainly what we were looking at a few years ago, um, it is a, a, a much reduced amount, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, we'll continue to, to, uh, to make our, our uh, payments and, and contributions towards that um, with uh, this, this budget. We are planning to fully fund the ARC um, and, and look on a go forward basis. We intend to continue to do so as well. Um, and hopefully reduce that reduce that amount uh, the unfunded amount significantly, and if we can get that funded ratio um, in the middle middle column there um, up to you know closer to seventy or eighty percent, um, it will begin to uh, to fund itself, uh, live off its own um, earnings, uh, and be able to make the the necessary payments out of the plan. Um, and be more self-sustaining uh, and the city won't have to con continue to contribute in um, such a, a, a material way. I'm not going to say, you know, we can put it in there and we'll never have to think about it again, but it certainly won't um, need to be the, the, um, the topic of conversation uh, as it is uh, so frequently in the conversations we have um, when it comes to unfunded liabilities. Um, the workers' compensation uh, liability, it, it's uh, funded at an 80% uh, ratio, which is essentially um, what best industry uh, standards. Um, this 24 
million dollar number is uh, sort of a, a, a pie in the sky, um, which number, which uh, if, if everything, uh, if, if we were to, it, it's essentially max exposure um, and 80% is uh, a, a confidence rate uh, provided to us by an actuarial right. that says, you know, our best guess is that you will have to pay approximately 80% of, of what's out there. And so we've got that um, in this case, it, you know, again, 80%, um, but it, it's, it's a, a liability um, that's funded adequately uh, and we don't need to make a ton of changes to. The accrued leave payouts, um, this is a number that doesn't fluctuate all that much. Um, we don't have any assets towards it because um, in most years, what goes in uh, also comes out uh, because folks uh, tend to use uh, vacation and leave um, at, at nearly the same rate that they accrue it. Um, clearly, there are um, groups in the city who don't, um, and it, but there are uh, and don't don't use it at that frequency, um, and it may be at or above or below. So, um, but on average, it's it's pretty similar um, year to year. Overall, um, the the unfunded liability portion down here in the bottom right of the screen is 550 million. Um, again, the largest portion of that uh, is is up top in our CalPERS liability, um, and you know we will continue to to pay that um, as we have one-time funds available uh, that, that we can use towards this, we will certainly look at uh, which way our dollar is best spent, whether that be uh, putting it towards, uh, uh, it, you know, in the CalPERS trust or the OPEB trust um, and to reduce the, the liability and, and which, which area can we make the, the most, uh, most meaningful impact. So that I will stop and uh, allow you all to ask some questions. Or comments. Um, and comments, certainly. And so, does anyone have any? None, right? <laughs> None. I might have some, but I, I want to let it. Okay, Aisha, good. <laughs> um, you know, for the most part, I just wanted to ask, uh, on the employer contribution rate, um, the CalPERS rate comparison and growth on page 6 of 10, um, fiscal year 2025 slash 2026 and, and beyond, uh, the employer contribution rate keeps going down, not significantly, but, you know, point some odd percentage, right? Uh, could you explain why? Um, essentially, there's a belief, which um, these numbers are based on what CalPERS tells us, right? And this is what CalPERS has told us. CalPERS is... Um, I don't even know if I would say they're of the belief. They have told us um, that they believe that our rates will uh, begin to um, peak and then go down at that point. I'm not foolish. You're not foolish. Um, it seems a bit foolish to think that when we just saw on that other table um, that that's the case. Um, there are ways that we could make those um, those those rates go down. Um, you know that we can certainly talk about and get into um, should, should the committee desire. Um, but <laughs> I trust CalPERS as far as I can throw their building in Sacramento and um, that's not very far, so. Okay. And then um, with the crude leave payouts where um, the unfunded ratio is 100%, why is that? We don't keep, um, Essentially, we're never going to have to pay that in a single day, right? Where, where we would have to pay that in a single day is like an end of day scenario. And we're laying 100% of all our employees off and we have to pay out every single dollar of leave that's due. So we pay um, perpetually. Um, when I take vacation, that amount's going to go down, right? And so we don't keep a, we don't keep a segregated uh we don't keep funds segregated uh, to address that liability. It's just part of our, our normal operations. Okay. And, and I do question that a little bit just because, in, you know, I, I always like to have something to fall back on, right? So 100% unfunded is not, and granted, I know it's a lot smaller than everything else. It's a little bit of a misnomer to call it unfunded um, because we are literally perpetually funding it all of the time. When we have, uh, we have, um, 
gigantic payouts. And when I, when I say gigantic uh, in this sense, um, it is uh, gigantic in a, a person's um, uh, individual uh, finances, not in the cities necessarily, but, but we'll have chunks of 50 or a hundred thousand when someone, a longtime employee has, um, has been here and retires um, and they have a, a large amount of um, a vacation uh, and, and other types of leave um, that we pay at, at an, at, through our operating budget. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's part of our normal everyday um, expenses. Okay. And, and granted, like I said, I know it's not the largest number that we're looking at, but, um, you know, it's still... Uh, still slightly questionable um, just because I'd like to have like a safety net. Um, I know that a lot of our members pay about like 15% into pension and that's kind of the growing trend. Obviously we have, you know, we want to cover as much as possible, but you know, we, we are asking employees to step up and I know that some are paying 1% into their OPEB per members. Right. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, you know, historically it was at 12%. Do we ever see, um, us falling back and telling the, the, the employees that you guys can go back to your pre-recession days? Um, that would be something that has to be negotiated. Um, and if you just want my blunt finance director uh, answer, no, I don't see a day. Uh, I don't see uh, the likelihood of our of an agency's CalPERS expense is uh, going down. Um, and so the ability to, to make those payments are going to rely on partnerships with our employees. If it's something that a group wants to negotiate, uh, you know, when we negotiate, everything's on the table essentially. Um, but, you know, I think the days of free pensions um, that used to exist uh, are part of a major part of the problem, uh, I'm sorry, a major part of what created this problem. Um, and so, no, I, I don't see a, a day where we get back to that. I could be wrong. Um, you know, I've been surprised before. Yeah, this no, no, I, I, I think that's the trend. And and with, with you know, CalPERS kind of always talking about retirement rates being, I, I know this has been heavily disputed with um, experts. Um, I think the 7 to 8% that they... Um, you know, keep addressing um, roughly 7%. That's not realistic, right? Um, as a rate of return. So only the future will tell us whether that's realistic or not. However, if we look back at history, we can say that it has not um, been mm -hmm. the truth. Um, year over year, right? Across the board. Well, not entirely. Um, at, at certain points, they were meeting their their investment targets. Um, it was a different market, you know, um, and they were they were able to invest in different types of things. And again, <laughs> we're now talking about one of the fundamental problems that um, has us where we're at today. CalPERS was the single single largest investor in a stock that you may recall uh, called Enron. Um, that being the case. They took huge losses. They took the biggest loss uh, of any Enron investor uh, in the world. And so, you know, that's that's one part of the problem Two, part of the reason that it will be incredibly difficult for them to achieve. Um, and I use the term return loosely because we all know what happened there. Um, but but they were seeing incredible gains that were seemed unsustainable. And oh, my gosh, guess what? They were. Um, and that's yeah, that's and why Enron's no longer with like us, that and that's we're we're paying for for that mistake um, by uh, Calpers, um, and Calpers has uh, changed the their uh, investment restrictions to attempt to avoid um, some of that, as well as their uh, real estate type of holdings. And, and I know when we talk about investing and, and trying to make sure that the city also um, we diversify our portfolio and things like that, just to make sure that, you know, we don't do the same mistakes we see other people do. Right. Um, have we considered investing in cryptocurrency? We have not. Um, you know, we've had discussions. It's not uh, something that we've been involved in um, thus far. Um, you know, as it continues to be around, 
um, and maybe as it uh, if if it becomes less volatile um, and the city's um, the city's uh, uh, principal portion of the investment uh, can be, uh, you know, sort of confidently in there and we're, we're confident that we'll get it back. Maybe we'll consider investing in there. To this point, it's been a bit too volatile. It's, it's still a fairly new uh, market. Um, so it, uh, to date, it's not something that we spent a ton of time uh, seriously considering because of the risks. Okay which I completely understand it goes up and down with extremes, right? However, um, I will say there are other cities that have invested, you know, they've pulled out a chunk of like, let's say a million dollars invested in specifically Bitcoin, but obviously, you know, there's a million versions of different cryptocurrency that you can invest in. Um, the return's great. Um, I will say from personal experience, um, there's great reward, uh, you know, if you get an opportunity for that, but with the large sums of funds that the city ha is, is privy to and has, um, you know, there's even potentially a greater return. So uh, I just wanted to say that that was just a curiosity thing on my end, but um, no further questions. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, I have to say that sounds like gambling to me, but um, and I and I would have to ask um, um, Dustin, uh, is that even something we could do under our policy? We have some pretty strict policies, and also city, local government investments are governed by even you know higher. I, I don't even know if it's allowed under the state state. I don't think it is uh, at this point under the state code. I would imagine that the longer that it hangs out, um, and the the more. Uh, science, if you will, that can be done on it, it will, uh, it will make its way into uh, the California uh, government code um, as, as an allowed investment uh, on some levels. Right. There are other cities who have done it. So I'm very eager to see what, what happens to their money. But, are they cities uh, we'll in California? Uh, I know one is, I want to say in Arizona or Texas, um, I'm not 100% sure uh, about California, but I have read that they have been, um, you know, taking a million dollars, something, I don't want to say small, but smaller than, you know, what we would normally invest if we were to do, invest something, something they could play with, if you will. Didn't someone and, lose huge amounts of money because someone died and nobody knew the password to his account? Uh, it, it, that's happened. Some guy threw his hard drive in the garbage as well. He, he needed to, he was willing to pay several hundred million dollars, if, you know, at least 70, 70 odd million dollars to be able to re uh, get that. Um, yeah. So I would trust that our director of finance knows how to do it the right way. But, um, you know, that's just an interesting thing concept as in today's market. Well, that is interesting. <laughs> um, so we'll keep it under, but I, I think it would not be allowable under our own or, you know, um, we're, 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 and maybe for a good reason, not allowed to take too much risk. I mean, these are public funds and, you know, so, okay. Council member Lamnon. Thank you. Um, just one question actually. So the, um, thank you for the report and, um, always really helpful stuff. Um, actually, two things real quick, sorry. One is, um, yes, always happy to have conversations about how we lower our payments. Um, anytime you're ready to put that back on the agenda, I'll, I'm happy to have that conversation uh, <laughs> and explore ideas and talk about, um, you know, healthcare opportunities, pension opportunities, all good, useful conversations and absolutely conversations that we need to have with our bargaining groups um, collectively, not during necessarily negotiation time, but um, as a joint problem solving exercise, because it's just a huge mountain that we can't, we can't climb alone. Um, and then the other, the other question was, um, so you mentioned about the um, the employees and their trusts. I realize those are trusts and have not yet, sorry, let me make sure I understand. So those funds are held in trust to be used for a premium payment at some point. And so they're not really reflected in our funded status yet. Is that right? So they are in our, um, OPEB is a bit different. Okay. Um, because there isn't, there isn't a, the city's on the hook for it. Um, and when an employee receives a payment from, for retiree medical, they receive it from the city. And so it's not, uh, it's, it's not like CalPERS where we send the city, the city sends CalPERS the money um, from the employee's 
share and the employer's share. We send them, you know, the, the, the dollars, they sit in there and, and are invested. Um, and then CalPERS makes those payments. They, they hold the assets, they, they um, liquidate those assets to then pay, uh, pay me for my retirement once I get there. In the case of OPEB, the city is literally each month writing checks um, to retirees um, for for their uh, whatever their benefit is, um, and so there is no quote unquote plan, if you will. Um, so when we put them into the uh, the OPEB trust, they're there forever until we take it out and pay um, and use it for an allowable expense. Allowable expenses in this case are simply for benefit payments. Um, and so when when we decide to liquidate them to pay, um, it's so so it is a one to one offset of the uh, the liability. And so is it reflected in the value of assets? It is. And, and so if we look at if we look at the um, yeah, if we look at that that um, the the I, and I can pull it back up. If we, if we look at um, the value of assets column that amount is offsetting the 77.75. Um, and that's why we have an unfunded liability of 69. Okay. Uh, I just wasn't sure if the, if the trust funds were um, included in the, the other assets as well. So, okay. And they are. So great. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Um, so, um, the on the OPEP, I, I can say that I have seen bigger mountains in my time here with the city and that we are making progress, which is good to see, um, especially in terms of OPEP, which was, you know, really in a, you know, deplorable, almost 100 you percent know, unfunded right. at one point. And, 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 and our efforts are showing, um, you know, good results here. Um, but uh, absolutely. So we, this fiscal year made, um, we have, we had, we had set a goal or set a policy of, of making a $3 million um, payment toward that. Um, this year, we cut it back to one initially um, because of, you know, because of the situation we were in that, or didn't know what was going to happen as a result of COVID, probably prudent to do. I know that um, when we get to, we last last budget meeting wasn't it the last budget meeting where we made that recommendation that will go during our budget discussions to the full council to um i believe that was for this fiscal year though to make an additional one million and i would think that with um that that might be an area where with other funds we may be receiving that we were talking about earlier um that we could even go to the full three um you know, knowing that that was coming. And I, that's a discussion that, you know, the council needs to have. But um, but if we did that, first of all, this would reflect the 1 million right now, right? Because we did make that payment. So it does not um, because it was, it, it's as a point, it, it is at a point in time. Um, and that point of time was prior to that $1 million. Uh, this is as so a- we made that 2 million or- Three million. What will that do to those numbers? Do you think? Or uh, it, it, you know, it will clearly make the assets larger, and hopefully the the um, hopefully the unfunded liability um, smaller as well. Essentially, all the city can control um, is its funded portion, um, and also oh, I shouldn't say that. What we can control is what we put into the into the the trust fund. Um, the impact of that is not only the assets in the um, in the the plan, but it also uh, shows the actuary good faith that we are making our payments as we say that we will, and so they don't just have this number that grows and grows and grows and grows um, into perpetuity. Because you know when we've got no dollars in there and we're saying, yeah, we'll pay it tomorrow, we'll pay it tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And um, then they say, well, you know, this could go on forever. And who knows when, it, you know, how, how long it'll go and how many participants and all of these things. Um, and so it, it, it makes a huge difference there. Uh, that, that was kind of the biggest difference um, that, you know, the most notable difference uh, versus a few years back when it was 
um, significantly higher. Uh, and then we started making more consistent payments, larger payments, all of these things. So as we continue to do that, um, the liability will, will likely shrink uh, as the assets grow. Yeah, and that has to do with the, the interest earning power of money. Mm-hmm. The dollar today is, um, is worth much more in that fund than when we say we're going to pay that dollar, you know, 10 years from now when it might actually be a higher, you know, be. And the other piece is that we're, we're paying the, the pay go portion um, out of our operating budget and not the, the, the assets that are in there. If we were um, putting in a dollar and then spending a dollar all the time, they're not going to assume that we're going to make much interest on that um, because we're putting it out, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out. Thus far, we've everything we put in is sitting there, gaining interest, doing very well for us, um, and you know they can factor in that growth over over the the, the long haul, uh, which also impacts the the unfunded liability portion. Well, I would be really interested in seeing that if we do, if we can get to, I mean, I, you know, either 2 million or 3 million. And even with, you're saying that even the first million isn't actually in there yet, what that might do to this. But, um, and also um, we did have established the um, policy of paying our big, um, rather than paying monthly, I guess, to uh, CalPERS, we pay it at the beginning of the year. Um, And did we do that this year? We did. Yeah. So um, that is a good policy and we should keep doing it because that actually saves us. That just saves us money from our general fund on an annual basis, but a good thing to do. Um, And let's see. Yeah. I was going to ask about the trust, the trust as well. You're saying that is reflected in these numbers here, but it's not singled out. It's part of the, it's part of all that's of all of the assets that are shown there. That's what we know as the OPEB trust. I'm sorry. All of the assets in the on the OPEB lines. Mm-hmm. That, those, are, those are assets that we know as the OPEB trust. So that's our. That's what we've established since a, like a couple of years ago or this past year. I thought we just established that trust. No, no, no. The, the trust that we uh, just recently established was related to CalPERS. So that's, uh, I'm sorry, to the pension. Okay. Uh, okay. That's, uh, that's what I thought in the beginning, but we were talking. Okay. So that, okay. So the money that's in that trust, where is that reflected? We, we have not made any contributions to that trust. Okay. We've, so there's we've there yet. we just established it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I think that's, um, I was just going to ask council member Lambden how things were, you, you keep tabs on um, CalPERS, I know, um, any news from there that any of you, that you have, Dustin or Sarah? Um, <laughs> I'll let you be the I, wet blanket. <laughs> what's that? I said, I'll let you be the wet blanket. Uh, yeah, so I admit that uh, given a lot of competing priorities, that one I have not followed quite as closely this year, this calendar year. There's just only so many things I can do. <laughs> and given that we didn't really have the the buy-in from as many cities as it would take to, to make the impact there, um, or the buy-in from the board members, I had to let it go for a while. So Okay. Um, well, yeah, I hadn't heard a lot from you about that. But yeah. does anybody do you know, I mean, how their returns are, you know, are so they had a, they had an incredibly rough uh, first quarter um, of the calendar year, um, and have since rebounded very nicely. Um, it, it did not look good at the at the onset of the pandemic. They were actually projecting zero percent um, returns, which uh, had made my heart skip many beats. Um, but like I said, it rebounded very nicely, um, and has, has performed very well, uh, for the remainder of the, uh, calendar 20. Um, and so far this year, I haven't heard anything that, uh, would lead me to believe, uh, that we, uh, are, are in for, uh, dark days in the same way that, that I felt, uh, as the pandemic started last, last year. I was going to say, cause the first, the first quarter of the, of the calendar year 2020, we didn't even really have COVID yet, or it was just starting to, but um, on the other and but uh, you, when you think about what the stock market did last year and is continuing to do this year, that would track more closely, right, to how CalPERS, I mean, I know it's not exactly, but um, 
but if the stock market is doing okay, CalPERS investments are already are also probably, you know, in that same trend, right? Yeah, I thought their uh, their annual return rate though was something like four point seven or something like that. I don't think they made really. I think they made se- seven this year again. I mean, twenty twenty again, but I could be wrong about that. That's accurate because they had a quarter of zero. It would have been very difficult for them to have made up um, and gotten back to that that seven mark. Um, you know, if you want my honest opinion, the seven percent is uh, going to be very difficult to uh, achieve and maintain over a long period of time. I think that we're probably uh, in for another discount, uh, a change in the discount rate, but. I will, you know, I, I certainly don't want to cause panic or, or you know, or, or give uh, bad information. So I'll wait for that to come. But myself as a person, I think that we are likely in the next few years to, to have an, another change in the discount rate. Okay. Um, Aisha. So um, number one, if we can kind of just clearly have where our... Um, funds are just FYI for, for these particular questions. Cause we, we tend to ask the same uh, question uh, over the course of these types of discussions. Uh, number one and number two, if we can get a legitimate answer on the cryptocurrency thing. And I, I do just want to highlight that. I think that it's- there, there was an assembly bill that looks to kind of make it into a uh, securities. And then also I think Berkeley's interested in something. I just did a quick Google while we were chatting. Um, so if we could have a legitimate uh, question and we could pose it to our labor folks because obviously it's their you know their future at hands um, what they would feel comfortable with I do think that with a lot of the larger investors also legitimizing this um, it is something to at least consider to look into a little bit until it's part of uh, until it's an allowable investment by the California government code it's not even worth the conversation if the state will not allow agencies to invest in it, we can talk. You're 100 percent sure they won't, right? The last I looked, it was not in the California government uh, investment code. Uh, we, you know, we brought the we brought the investment policy um, back. I don't know, what was October, November range, I think, um, and and it wasn't in at that time. So it it could have changed between uh, then and now. Um, I'll have a, a conversation with our um, with our uh, investment advisor here in the next uh, few weeks, and I, I can you know ask her. She she's got uh, more of a uh, you know finger on the pulse, if you will, of what's coming further down the road uh, in the th- the changes that they may be considering. Um, you know that's 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 her work. Mm-hmm. That and even from the city managers, you know, the, um, I know you belong to a league. Um, so if, if if they're having discussion, it's just interesting to keep your your options open, if you will. I had a interesting. I was like when there were there had been a city in Southern California that had its cannabis revenues rated. I said, well, we should just make our cannabis folks pay us in Bitcoin and then we wouldn't have to worry about that. So and then Dustin had mild heart failure, but then we, we got through that. It's worth a discussion, at least to just, you know, quickly keep tabs on it, right? So, thank you. All right, thanks. Um, the wave of the future. You may see it in your time. <laughs> I'm. It makes me a bit nervous, I have to say, but I don't even really quite know what it is. To me, it's imaginary money, but, you know. Um, okay, with that, um, that brings us to item number um Five, which is the fiscal year 2022 budget process update. Sure, and I can do that. Uh, it's just a, a, a verbal update. Um, we are well underway our way in uh, building the proposed budget as well as the, um, the CIP uh, budget um, so that we can provide it to council um, in the hopes by the end of next month. Um, last year, we were uh, about the same place. Um, and then we had to tear it up and throw it away. Um, that's certainly not what we're hoping for um, and, and don't intend uh, for this coming year. Um, but we will have it to council. Uh, we're, we're the majority of our way through all of the um, 
all of our department meetings. Um, and so we've got a good idea of what folks are asking for. Uh, and then it's just a matter of, of, of trying to get things in balance and provide council with a balanced budget uh, to consider um, as we as we move into the next fiscal year. Uh, like I said, we should have it to council by the end of next month. Uh, then we'll be coming uh, on May 15th for our first uh, budget work session, um, which will be the, that Saturday work session that we missed last year uh, because of the pandemic. Um, we'll likely have a bit different format uh, this year, but um, we seem to always change and uh, it seems to, to go all right. Um, so, and then we'll continue through uh, a couple of more work sessions uh, on both the operating and capital side. Uh, we will certainly come to this committee uh, to, to have uh, additional discussions uh, and, and more discussions than we will at the full council level um, to get feedback and, and, and direction um, and heading for a, a uh, adoption in late May, early June this year. Um, okay. Wh when did you say that we would be getting the budget? Uh, late April. Okay, and then the May 15th session, what, um, if you could comment or the city manager on what's contemplated there, um, I mean, will we be seeing the department heads and being able to have that conversation about? Absolutely so. Yeah, Kelly, if you want Actually, to go. Actually, um, if all goes well, we may have enough people vaccinated that we may actually be able to do it in person on May 15th, so. That'd be nice. <laughs> well, I'm not kidding. Not, not promising, um, but that would be really lovely if we could at least, we'd still do it virtually for members of the public, but I think maybe if we could get the, the groups together, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but we'll not all of council will, will be vaccinated, just FYI, so um, I doubt that that's going to be possible. Okay, well, we'll, it's wishful thinking. So uh, yes, we. but the department heads will be there. We will be doing presentations. And as we mentioned earlier, um, they'll, they'll be either online or in person. And then um, as we mentioned earlier, the discussion on the um, the public safety workshop as well. Okay. Um, all right, any other comments? Aisha, is your hand up from before? Or yeah, no, um, so... Okay, so late April, and we have roughly, what, about 10, 15 days to potentially um, review it before, and, and you said May 15th, and then May, I just want to highlight that if, if I, I will not say anything, but thank you. It, it, if you are leading to, it's a lot of work for us. Well, yes, that is a time period where, you know, we have a big document to review in a short time. Maybe the city manager will keep other big things off agendas while we're having to do that. Okay. Um, I will attempt. I cannot promise. Yeah. Let's not have like, you know, reviewing the entire general plan or, you know. <laughs> um, okay. Um any, any comments? Any other comments, Sarah? No. Okay. That brings us to uh, re uh, reviewing and approving the 2021 agenda planning calendar, which has three, um, well, okay. So we have the April 21st meeting where we're going to talk about proposed budget, the proposed budget, but we won't we probably won't have been given it at that point or we will likely have a sort of high level conversation uh what we're looking at and some some summarized numbers um if we can get it to you by then we absolutely will um it's just uh likely impossible with us uh having the conversations the the following week um about uh about the community conversation and and potentially proposed changes um, to uh, to some of the department's budgets uh, based on based on the community conversations um, and the outcomes of those. Um, so we will do our best to to provide some information. I think we're also going to add to that meeting uh, an overview of the um, the the new look CIP as well to to try to give um, to try to give. Uh, the committee uh, a, a, a head start or, or a fresh look at it um, so that you can uh, offer any feedback that you might have um, on the layout, et cetera. Um, that so just that, CIP? 
What's um, that? Just the CIP, not the um, operating budget. Correct. The operating should look very similar, um, <laughs> maybe not in numbers, um, but in format um, to what we've had, what we had last year. Um, the CIP, we're, we're uh, looking at some some changes uh, to the way that the the information will be presented. Okay. Um, all right, and then we have um, we will have a special meeting on April twenty sixth for policy innovation workshop presentations. Oh, all right, I would point out on, on April twenty first is a discussion on mayor and city council um, budget, which you know so be thinking about that before coming to the meeting with, um, you know, what, you know, what you would like to see in that budget for next year, as far as, um, well, council accomplishments, goals for, you know, the next year, because those are, those are still elements that are included in our budgets. Um, and then any other comments you may want to have on that budget. And then um, we'll be getting a COVID-19 funding update. Will that, will that be, um, Base uh, the uh, a discussion of the um, st uh, you know of this um, stimulus pa or relief package or just right. so what what that was on there uh, for previously was intended to uh, give give council an update on where we're at in the reimbursement process from whether it be uh, FEMA or uh, HHS or whomever and we can provide that information as well um, yeah. I won't, okay. I won't get into that since it's not, it's not, the, it's not the stimulus money. It's, or the, you know, the package, it's more like what we're, what we're being reimbursed for costs that we put out there. And okay. Correct. all right. And then we don't really have anything on our agenda for um, May 19th, but I'm sure something will come up and then we'll have a budget deep refund June 16th. Um, so um, what, um, any comments, uh, Sarah? Yeah. Uh, thank you. So this is kind of on the future agenda items. Um, we have had listed uh, public banking there because we had talked about it starting in 2017. And then I know when Count, uh, Mayor Pratem Wahab came on that you also expressed interest in that topic and had an opportunity to meet with um, the folks who are working on that topic. And I know you guys got an email from me about that. So I won't... Um, summarize that, but I did want to give you a little bit of update about what I heard, which I thought was pretty encouraging. So um, following the state uh, approval of that, there's now a set of regulatory framework that is being worked on by the state of California and um, is expected out this summer, potentially. And so, and then it will be um, uh, F -I -F -D -I -C, did I say the right mm -hmm. acronym, insured. Um, and that the intent there is to be um, kind of a, a public bank with public funds, meaning not funded by public funds, but um, that it is a bank for public entities in the same model that the North Dakota one is, as opposed to a retail bank. Um, and so, um, and as we've talked about, at least as I've talked about, um, you know, can we leverage local dollars for local needs, um, the opportunity to have a, a bank um, to do, you know, we talked a little bit about the liquidity question and some of the other, um, and the, you know, how does it work? Does it do payroll? Is that safe? Um, how does the city know that it's safe with the investments? All of those questions that um, we've kind of talked about in the past, I kind of brought to the table and not that all the answers are there yet, but I was encouraged. It felt like there was a lot more there, there, so to speak, than there had been in 2017. And, um, and so the next step for them, I mean, they're obviously waiting for the regulations. They're continuing to build out their board. Um, and then the steps that we can consider as a council are, um, you know, whether or not we're supportive of just the concept of having a local bank, something like the, um, um, the North Dakota model, um, doesn't commit us to anything, but if we're supportive of that, then a resolution in support of that would actually be helpful um, as the county is looking at being a partner in this. Um, and then there's opportunity for us to have maybe a work session. I'm thinking June maybe, but obviously after the budget session, <laughs> after you know we, we finalize the policing stuff and have an HR director. <laughs> so <that laughs> Dustin isn't doing too. Anyway, obviously I'm not dedicating that just throwing it out there um, to have some conversation when the regulations come out 
to think through. Is that something that makes sense for us? And then if there, if it is something that we may want to be part of, there's an opportunity to help pay for the, what is essentially the application to become an official entity. Um, that filing fee is about $100,000. And so each, each jurisdiction that would like to have a permanent seat at the table in terms of making decisions for the entity um, is asked to contribute some portion of that, maybe 20000 maybe less, um, to kind of be a, a founding member in that. So I'm not asking for that money today or anything other than maybe considering the resolution in terms of conceptual support. So just wanted to, and obviously it's not on the agenda for discussion, but um, wanted to give that update as um, something we want to and it, it is actually on the, um, you know, on the future potential mm -hmm. future agenda item. So yeah, we, we shouldn't discuss the actual thing, but I, I would say keep in touch. I mean, you know, get it on when it appropriate time, uh, get it on one of our agendas. That would be, yeah. did you want to say something? Kelly? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, usually yeah, we take the June meeting off just to give the finance team a little bit of right. break after the budget adoption. Um, so That's a good point. Uh, I, I mean, if, if the timing appears to be needed for the public bank discussion, but I would just given everything that's been going on and the additional work we're going to have to do around the stimulus, I might just request that we, we do take a hiatus for June, um, especially with all the special meetings we've done this spring. So so that would just be my, my request to the committee as we honor that, that break in June for everyone. Yeah, I was actually thinking July. I wasn't thinking yeah. June. I'm sorry if I said June. I meant July for exactly that reason. Um, was, we did have uh, June sixteenth as one of our meetings that for a debrief. Is that? Are you saying we probably will cancel? Yeah, we, well, we usually would either do that in June or July. Um, so just and we've I think we've taken the June meeting off and then done the debrief in July. Or, in July. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So we can okay. we can play with it, but I just wanted to make sure the committee was comfortable honoring that little pause for the finance staff. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> been a hard year for everybody. I'm sure we're fine with it. I hope that everybody is. <laughs> Aisha. Oh, um, uh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. It just one last thing that I forget to mention is that um, Aisha, I know you've met with them and Barbara, you'll probably be hearing from Didicus Ramos, who's kind of one of the local contacts for them, for the, just to have more information. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Aisha. So, so since we're just talking about public bank before I get on to the schedule, um, obviously I support the concept. Um, the framework is not fully vetted just yet, um, number one, and they've been asking for funds for their, um, let's say, business plan. And, and until the framework is really in place, um, their business plan will pivot to fit that business model uh, that's out there, right? Because they have to follow the, the laws. Um, so there's a lot of discussion there. There's a lot of in individuals invested in this and particularly uh, statewide too. Um, I think uh, Director Clausen and, and um, to our city manager, I, I know I've shared some stuff with you guys that obviously this is, in my opinion, a great idea, great concept. Um, so we'll definitely see that. Um, I do think June is a little soon because I don't think that the framework will be fully there yet either. And then I always thought you guys took vacations or, or something like that in July, personally, um, just because to me, that's the new fiscal year and you guys did all the last minute crunches. August. It's actually August. Is the yeah, they take, they usually take time that. around like end of July, right? So we usually I do haven't had a vacation in a while, so I don't even know what real life looks like anymore. So, okay. so, so <laughs> I, I want to respect that um, just because I know that we, I think all of us have had like go, go, go kind of mentality. Um, but I also do think that the public bank situation is something that we should keep an eye to just the way, you know, I'd love to talk about cryptocurrency. Um, and I know, I know in the past that I've suggested that cannabis also go into the public bank and, you know, things like that. Um, they also want to be housed. So, um, th there's a lot going on with the, uh, public bank of the East Bay. Um, and I also don't think that it's fully in the same direction. So we also have to know exactly what we can do, what we can't do. And, um, you know, find some consensus, if you will. Um, so that's that. May 19th, I'm, I'm so sorry, it says that TBD. So what, what are we holding that for? TBA. <laughs> TBA. We, uh, we're waiting for agenda items. I'm sure there will be something on that. I don't know that we have agenda items probably for that date yet. Okay. To be determined, if so, 
public bank should be a go, right? Just FYI, maybe even sooner or later, right? Um, I, mean, if, I mean, my only my only pushback there is if we don't think it's ready in June, it's not going to be I'm ready. Just giving you a hard time. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, uh, no. Um, <clears throat> I definitely, so you guys stated that the, the budget we may finalize end of May. So you, this is a lot sooner than what we did last year, obviously, right? And it seems like it's a lot sooner than two years ago. Am I? The same time frame from two years ago. Okay. And then when they present um, the different department heads, um, how much time do we plan on giving them? And the only reason why is because I think the back and forth between the council members, the questions we may potentially have, and I just feel like we, we need to give them a chance to explain what they've done and then what they plan on doing because they go over their goals, right? Um, and I think that they, I would like to see what they've done because it's a moment for them to kind of reflect and say, this is what our department has done and how successful. And, and you know, honestly, I think, every department has really stepped it up. So I, I just want to know like timing wise, because like the last, the last one I was in, which was the very first one I've ever been in. Um, it seemed rushed. At least that's how I felt. So yeah. if it's broken down in two days or one longer day. I was going to say, we can take a look at the schedule and just map, you know, I think we, we haven't, we haven't planned the schedule for the day. We may need more time since we are planning to do the public safety discussion as well. So we may need to, maybe it's we, the next, the following Tuesday, we reserve more time for a work session and we start at five and, you know, do. So I, I will let us play with the calendar a little bit, but yeah, I, I, I think, and I think the council has expressed a desire to have those, those conversations to be able to ask the department heads questions about what's going on in their operations. So um, noted. We'll, we'll and, and, and definitely data driven. So I would like to see the metrics because we should tie every department to a metric of, you know, as I've said many, many times, you know, what have they achieved? What are their really metric wise, the marks that they've hit and where is, let's say the areas that they've been um, unable to hit and for what reason. And um, as we look forward towards goals, like goals should always be tied to metrics in my opinion. So. So oh, thank you for that. Thank you for being the new uh, council member Mendel on the team here <laughs> to bring up metrics <laughs> and really focus on that. You always need one. So, <laughs> um, um, okay. With that, um, any uh, committee um, or staff announcements? If not, I'm not hearing anyone. Have a good dinner, everyone. I, I hope I'll get to bed earlier than last night. And, uh, <laughs> and um, thank you for attending and we'll see you at the next meeting. Okay. Sure.